it's been an interesting thing like uh like uh DJs you know becoming the front man and having followings like that like a strong following like that so here's the question i have as you start like you danny you were saying like moving as an artist like i want to be kind of djing like an artist do you do you have a fear of losing those like working dj roots sometimes like having your i feel like sometimes they can be a disconnect with that shit sometimes if you if you're not on like the working dj like kind of just constantly you know, taking these certain gigs and, and treating yourself like an artist, do you think there's a disconnect? Because, like, recently there was a tweet from Kei Trinata, right, that went viral on, on fucking Twitter. He was basically, I don't know, a lot of working DJs felt like he was shitting on them and blah, blah, blah. But Kei Trinata tweeted out, you know, DJs have to step up their selection now because, boy, if I hear What's Love one more time, and everyone just went at this motherfucker like, who the fuck is Kei Trinata to talk about? This about working working DJs and what the fuck they playing and what's being played in the clubs when he's not technically a DJ DJ. He's more of a producer DJ. First of all, let me say I love what's love. Um, I'm always going to rock out when I hear that record. I don't care where I'm at. I don't care if I'm the most famous DJ out ever or if I'm still, you know, local. It doesn't matter. I love what's love. Um, yeah, I do think there's a sort of a disconnect. And you asked if, if I'm afraid of losing that working dj hustle is that what you said well it's just that 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 perspective you know what i'm saying like you can get Mind disconnected straight. if you're just doing all these big events you blow up and you're not doing the working shit and then you know you just kind of you get disconnected it's like celebrity life man like they just get to yeah. disconnect they don't know what regular motherfuckers are doing i mean we had an yeah. issue with this by like, like years ago between a track kind of talking about the the you know, basically the hustle of working DJs and everyone's like, yo, you never been a working DJ. So why the fuck are you speaking on that shit? You know, it was that was between a track and Rocticon at one point. I mean, yeah, that is something that I am afraid of, you know, coming across. But I don't know until I get there, man. I don't know. <laughs> you know, so right now, Dana Lou's still a working DJ and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm my ear still to the streets um you know so i'm just working every day and we'll see what happens i don't know what do you, i'll to... tell you i'll tell you it, for me i think it, it applies to me more because the older i get the more i get disconnected with shit and i have to like truly make an effort so shout out to my guy millhouse millhouse knows when i was in zanzibar in south africa i was just playing afro beats and dance hall and african music and what have you and then i came back to the states in april I was like, Millhouse, I need to know what the fuck is going on. And he gave me a drop box of everything that was new. You know, a lot of New York drill shit, a lot of uh, money bag. Yo, I was like, this guy came up during the pandemic. Right. <laughs> and a lot of like little baby stuff. And, yo, I went through it and I was like, man, I don't want to be no old head. But I'm like, there was no way that people can be into this money bag. Yo, shit. Right. That was in my head. I was like. I'm not feeling it. And Milhouse was like, nah, man, this shit goes hard. I, I think it goes hard on social media. I haven't heard anyone play Money Bag Yo all summer. You know what I'm saying? Matter mm -hmm. of fact, a lot of the new music that people were playing was either like Afrobeats, Afro Caribbean, subcultural shit. And then, you know, Drake, uh, you know, whenever Drake drops something new, uh, a lot of the, the women rappers, uh, whether it's like, you know, City Girls, Megan Thee Stallion, uh, there's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. That's yeah. the shit that people were playing. Nobody yeah. was truly playing all this like, <clears throat> oh baby, money bag yo. And there's a whole bunch of artists that I have in a crate that I never touched because every time I dropped it, it bombed. You know, so I have to do a concerted effort to like sit down with people like Mel House, people like Dana Lou, and be like, what the fuck is going on? And then when I listen to it, I really have to like take that word as the gospel because sometimes I don't hear it. You know, but what's that? There's a really big song. Is it called Back Back to Something? Back oh. in Blood? Back Bruce in Blood. Shasta. So that's huge, right? Right, yeah. But, oh, yeah. But with, when I heard yeah. it, let it, yeah. When I heard it in that folder, that's Pooh Shiesty and Little Doug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a lot of Pooh Shiesty shit I haven't played all summer, right? Yeah. But when, when Millhouse gave me that folder and I heard Back in Blood, it did not stand out from the other songs. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he was like, no, that's the one. Yeah. And he was right. That was the one. But yeah. I didn't know that the second verse was the, the one. The second verse, right? Yeah. The little Dirk verse, yeah. 
So the first time I played it at Everyday People, it was so flat. I mixed out. I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of this immediately. And then Mel was like, no, 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 you got to play the second verse. So then eventually I played the second verse and I saw the reaction. But if your ears are not to the streets, like it's it's hard to know that stuff. You know, luckily I DJ a lot with Silent Addy. You know, he's up on everything. Yeah, yeah. So I get to hear it like firsthand. Shout out to Silent Addy, man. He was killing yeah. it. Well, I mean, I mean, how do y'all feel about that kitchen out of tweet? I, and, and just everything that's going on with Twitter right now, like, you know, throughout the whole year, like D- DJ Twitter has been like canceling songs. They've been saying, you know, assistance played out. They've been saying they've just been listening to a whole bunch of songs and shit that is played Swag out. Swag Surfing was one too. Swag Surfing was trying to be, oh, can- yeah. they're trying to cancel that shit off LA. Any DJ in LA should not play Swag Surfing. That's what they were saying and shit. But you know, it's right. funny. I think What's Love, particularly that song, is one of the forefront records for a whole age group of people that are now throwing the parties especially those mid 2000 parties what's love is a staple so trying to be like you know trying to kind of like shun that song off is kind of real crazy to do so and also it didn't hurt that it was just um ja rule and fat joe was did verses and that's like both of their songs yeah and, and you know to me definitely helped. fat joe ja rule as much as you want to clown ja rule him, Fat Joe, Ashanti, those are like local New York City treasures. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely don't go man. with these people. Like, that's our youth. Like, that's such a golden era for us coming up. So I just think that tweet was misplaced um, because, you know, producer DJs, they get booked to play their own music. So they walk into a room and they have a captive audience. When you have a captive audience, you can play whatever you want. You play your own music. And then you can play your influences. So you're only digging from these bags where everything is just amazingly esoteric and like original and all of that. So they play to a captive audience. Mainstream DJs, the opposite. Our crowd is totally inattentive, right? We got to get their attention. And we got to play the songs they like. We got to play the songs that they grew up on and that it's virtually a karaoke night, right? And, And when we got them, when we really got them, then we can introduce something new, something like super cool and esoteric. Yeah. But we can't stay in that bag for too long because we're going to lose their lose their it. focus. So it's it's apples and oranges, you know. <laughs> somebody like Kate Trinata shouldn't be talking about what's love and, you know, and then like some guy who's just slaving at some random bar playing to NYU kids shouldn't be trying to introduce some deep UK remix or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think it was funny how like working club DJs didn't give a shit about shitting on K and just like talking shit to him on Twitter. And then you would see these other DJs who like really look up to K and they were finding nice ways of being like, yo, you kind of wrong for this tweet. You sound kind of like crazy for saying this shit. Like these motherfuckers. So someone there were like totally like, wait, so, someone was saying, um, let me read some of this shit. It was pretty funny from Shy Dooley. If you're a DJ, don't ever play any popular songs. Yeah, the peasants might like it, but the high fashion influence in the corner will hear it. Then your career is over. And then, and then shout to C-Flow. He said, non-working DJs, celeb headliners, etc. Telling working DJs what they should or shouldn't play just painfully uh, <laughs> shows how out of touch they are. This is K. Trinata's response. I see people getting mad at this one, result in saying that I can't DJ after all. Y'all totally missed the point. There's a lot of amateurs that get a gig and then they play that song. Something's wrong with them. I just want to push their creativity when it comes to their song selection. You know, he tried to kind of like walk it back a little, but you can't deny the intention behind the original tweet. It's like he heard it and he was like, oh, another fucking working stiff playing the same ass boring song. And that's why he tweeted it. And that's why I hate Twitter, man. I do. Because Twitter takes you in like the darkest corners of people's minds. And it's usually negative. <laughs> That's why I try not to tweet anything like negative. Bec- like my draft folder in Twitter is full of shit that I would never send, you know, and it's not even like controversial. I'm always like, all right, if you were to read this tweet in the morning, would you say to yourself, oh, he's just an indulgent asshole? I'm like, yeah, yeah delete. I, I, and, and people can't help themselves. Somebody as big and rich and famous and he has awards, you know, Kate Trinata has awards. 
He has a Grammy. Shouldn't be tweeting some shit. Grammys. Like yeah, he yeah, has, yeah, a, he has Grammy. a Grammy. Yeah. He shouldn't be A, shitting on a DJ who played that song, and B, shitting on Fat Joe, Ja Rule, and Ashanti indirectly. Like, <laughs> just, you, you should have been elevated beyond all of this. I, That's I, all I got. I have say. a question. How often is he spinning? I've I've never I've never seen him spin. I've never he gets booked for private events and festivals. His street number right now is like a hundred racks, a hundred and fifty K. Like he's out of here. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe he went on tour, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or it hadn't or it hasn't started yet. I, I always think it's crazy when when motherfuckers at, at and in his like position and his stature right now has to like say something about something so minuscule. Do you know what I mean? Like he was in a lounge. And he, for, for for you to tweet out shitting on a DJ about playing Fat Joe, it doesn't make any sense. Like that would be the last shit I would say. If you want to check the full episode of this clip, click the video on the left. Or if you'd like to continue watching more road clips, click the video on the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new clips and videos from Road Podcast throughout the week.